Welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm here today with attorney Trevor Rockstad with the law firm Davis and Crump. And we're talking today about a certain class of antibiotics. Now, a lot of people take antibiotics, Trevor. What, what kind of antibiotics are we talking about here? Bill, the antibiotics that we're talking about in this case are a class of antibiotics called fluoroquinolones. Uh, that's kind of a long word, so we use the, the shortened abbreviation FLQs. It's a, it's a class of antibiotics that's used to treat a variety of bacterial infections, uh, very commonly and widely prescribed. There are a lot of common names people have probably heard these drugs called, right? Right. Uh, the, the class of drugs includes Cipro, Leviquin, Avalox, uh, and there are a number of others uh, that are in this class of fluoroquinolone antibiotics. So what are the risks to these FLQs? Well, these FLQs have been associated with a number of injuries. Uh, and, and the interesting thing is that this class of injuries really has a similar mechanism of action, meaning that we believe that the association between these injuries and the FLQs is similar across all of these injuries. The injuries include uh, most seriously aortic dissection and aortic aneurysms. We're also investigating and pursuing cases involving tendon rupture and retinal detachment, also very serious injuries, Bill. Aortic aneurysm, that sounds pretty serious. It's a very, very serious uh, condition, Bill. They're oftentimes called the silent killer, and, and the reason they're called that is because oftentimes before someone is diagnosed, uh, it's too late and the person is already dead. So these antibiotics, these FLQs, they've been on the market for quite some time. What is the, the level of risk for people who are taking them? The level of risk is very serious. Uh, a, a recent journal article in the British Medical Journal found that there's a, a hazard profile of 2.72, meaning that a person who uses or ingests a FLQ is almost three times more likely to have one of these events, an aortic dissection or an aortic aneurysm, as somebody who takes placebo. Wow, that's incredible. So do the people who make these drugs warn their potential customers about the risks? Surprisingly, they don't. Uh, this is not a risk that shows up in the labeling of this drug, and, and that really is to us, that's the, the crux of this case, is that the manufacturer didn't give that information to physicians or to patients. Uh, and, and the key is that there are other antibiotics out there that will treat these conditions that FLQs are used to treat. And, and it's our, our strong opinion, my strong opinion, that people should be given the knowledge and the information that the manufacturers have so that they can make an informed decision about what antibiotic or what medication they'll take. And just to be clear, this litigation only involves this class of antibiotics, not all antibiotics, correct? That's true, Bill. Just, just the fluoroquinolones or FLQs. So if people are, are taking these drugs, maybe they haven't had any adverse reactions, but for those that have, what's their recourse? Well, first I would, would say they should stop taking the FLQs. Uh, this, this risk profile that we're seeing is, is simply too high to continue using these, these drugs. If they have been injured by these drugs, if they've experienced a tendon rupture or an aortic aneurysm, aortic dissection, or even a retinal detachment, I would encourage anyone out there to contact our office. We're pursuing lawsuits against the manufacturers of these drugs, and uh, we believe that they should be held accountable for the injuries that they've caused. Information you may not have known about some popular antibiotics on the market right now from attorney Trevor Rockstad with the law firm Davison Crump. Thanks for watching.